This is the Ford Bronco, Ford's answer to Jeep's segment-defining Wrangler. But you knew that already, because we're some of the last people on Earth to get our hands on this thing. But what you might not have seen is how it does not only off-road, but in the snow off-road. Now in a couple minutes, Paulo is gonna take this thing on the off-road course at Road America and walk through a lot of the off-road capability, which is probably why you clicked on this video. But before we do that, we have to talk about how this thing does on the road, because the reality is, if you get one of these things, that's where you're gonna be spending most of your time. So let's talk about that. Now, you can get your Bronco, as of today anyway, in basically two flavors. You can get the base engine, which is a 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder, or you can get the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 that we have in this application, or this tester here. And if you're a little bit more patient, you can wait for the upcoming Bronco Raptor. And this isn't confirmed, but there might be a Bronco Raptor R with the V8. The engine we have today is a 2.7 liter EcoBoost twin turbo V6, which makes it the most powerful Bronco you can buy until the new Raptor comes out. Between the four cylinder and the six cylinder, this is the correct engine to get. The 330 horsepower and 415 pound feet fit this over 4,700 pound body better than the four cylinder. Now 4,700 pounds, that's a lot of weight to move around, so I'm very glad that we have the twin turbo EcoBoost V6 here to move around all this heft. And 4,700 pounds, yeah, that is a lot, but there's a good reason for that because unlike the Bronco Sport that we tested last year, this is the full potency, ladder frame, body on frame, true off-roader. Ford didn't even really try to hide the fact that they benchmarked the Wrangler on this one. However, since they were second to the market, they could fix a lot of the issues people have with the Wrangler. Hardcore rock crawlers will appreciate the solid front axle on the Wrangler, but that's a small percentage of buyers, and on the roads, that solid front axle makes the Wrangler a chore to keep in its lane. The Bronco swaps out that solid front axle for independent front suspension. It also adds rack and pinion steering, you know, like every other car on the road. And like I said, Paolo's gonna take us through a number of off-road challenges at Road America in a minute, but what we wanna talk about here is how this Bronco performs on the road as compared to its main rival, the Jeep Wrangler. So it's very apropos that we just got out of the Wrangler 392. And what this results in is something that feels so much more at home on the road here. There's so much less deadness on the center in your steering rack. I have the 35 inch Sasquatch package, the off-road tires, and I still have so much better sense of what my front wheels are doing. I don't have to make these constant micro adjustments that I would in the Wrangler just to keep myself in my lane. It's so much more composed, it's so much better road manners here in this Bronco. And at the end of the day, the fact that you have independent front suspension and you have a normal rack and pinion steering system means that you have more control, this thing is more disciplined on the road, so Ford can fit their Copilot 360 2.0 on here. And that gives you something that you can't get in the Wrangler, and that's lane centering, lane tracing, whatever you want to call it, it'll keep you in your lane. And that's really nice. On the road, this thing is worlds better to drive than the Jeep, and I'm sure a lot of you think I'm exaggerating, but I'm really not. The ride is so much more refined, the power and the torque from this V6 make it feel reasonably quick, and the hardtop on here, now that it's devoid of the squeaks, makes the cabin reasonably isolated from road noise, except for the A-pillar. Of course, the big 35-inch tires with the Sasquatch package remove a little bit of feel and feedback as opposed to the smaller, more street-oriented tire, but it's totally worth it from an aesthetic perspective. And speaking of aesthetics, let's meet up with Paolo to talk looks before we send it through Road America's off-road course. Okay, 
I gotta say, this thing, while it is more refined on the road than the Wrangler, it is by no means a luxury car. You still get a lot of wind noise, a lot of road noise, but I mean, look at it. Yeah. Look, it's awesome. I think they did a really good job reinventing the Bronco. It's definitely. really cool. It's got a lot of presence. So we've got the Wild Track trim, which comes with the Sasquatch package, right? Yeah, that comes standard. So with that, you get the 35s. Uh, yep, you get and they're the, Goodyear territory all terrains. Correct. You get the 17 inch beadlock capable uh, in, wheels. In the gloss black, which looks fabulous. Yep. The has a upgraded suspension. So you're basically about an inch and a half um, above the packages that don't come with the Sasquatch package. Yep. Yep. You also have the fender flares that allow for more clearance. Now, in terms of the, the lift, real quick, you get the Bilstein shocks, right? Yeah. So you get the upgraded Bilstein shocks, yep. um, position sensitive ones. So. Yes. Those are really nice. Uh, this one, we also have the running boards on the side. Yeah, I think, I mean, you can get a Bronco without the Sasquatch package. Don't, Yeah. don't do that. This is the only way to spec it because you get the extra wide fender flares, you get the big tire. This is how the Bronco is supposed to look. Yeah, right? well, and I talk about it behind my wheel, but you shouldn't actually get the wild track either. I actually don't know why they made this spec. Yes. I'll get into it later, but <laughs> I'll tell you which spec you should get. Also, you can get two grill options. This is the acceptable one. This is the one. The black with the gloss and the white Bronco lettering and these LEDs. You can get different lower trim headlights. This is the way to get it. If you want the true Bronco experience, you get Sasquatch package, you get this grill, uh, and you get the full LEDs. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, one of the things that I also noticed behind the wheel is this hood is massive. Yeah. And it's a good thing that you have these, um, these limb spreader uh, attachments here because it kind of marks where you are in your lane. But again, maximum payload, 150 pounds. You put some wire from here up to your rack and it spreads the trees as you go through the trail. Really nice to have. Also have your mirrors here so you can take off your doors with no problems. Without, <laughs> without being able to not see behind you. Uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting and you don't get in the Jeep is the Jeep uh, windshield obviously folds down so you couldn't attach the roof rack to the, I guess, front A pillar or this, this crossbar here, but you can here uh, because the windshield doesn't fold down. And to be honest, I don't know anybody that's ever folded down their windshield in a Wrangler. So I like the way that they've done this. Around the side, it looks kind of funny. Yeah, I think I, I prefer the two door, uh, the four door, sorry. I yeah. think the two door looks good, but it's yeah, a little I agree. short. For, for me and the, the practicality that I would look for from this thing, I would want the four door, especially with the seats, that, how they fold down. And we'll get to that in a minute. But it just, it looks kind of fun, but it's just not as practical. Love the tail lights, kind of look like a B. Yeah, B for Bronco. Nice little Bronco really cool. logo there. Other than that, the back is really Wrangler. Yeah, Which similar. isn't necessarily a bad thing. I have noticed that with the trunk, you have this like gas strut in there, which is a little weird to play with. You get some resistance opening it, and then if you let it like hang for a second, it'll then open it more for you. Mm. A little bit weird, but it's cold out here, so let's get inside. Yes. Okay, interior. So at first glance, we just got out of the 392 Wrangler. Mm -hmm. Which one do you like from just an immediate impression? Yeah, I think I like this one a, a little bit better. Like you have a big o, a bigger infotainment system. Yep, 12 um, inch yep. versus the 8.4 in the Jeep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You got a bigger digital uh, gauge cluster, which I like. Yep. There's just like more options and display settings that you have in here. Um, the, yeah. the 360 camera seems a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Just some of like the functionality and things. Um, I really, I really like it in here. Yeah, I think it, it feels a little bit nicer in here, a little bit more put together without sacrificing that kind of like rugged feel. You know what I mean? Yep. Like you still have this handle here and it's still like that all that fabric rugged that's material. rubberized and yeah. plastic where you can wipe it down or wash it down or whatever. So it is really nice. But you talked about this 12 inch screen. It's running the latest sync system. Very good. Graphics are fantastic. I really do yeah. like that 360 camera. That's really nice. Right above it, you've got your, um, your toggles for your front diff lock, rear diff lock trail turn assist, which you'll demonstrate in a minute, yep. traction off hazards. But then you've got your influencer package up here where you can mount a GoPro. You can get an optional rail up here where you can mount a camera and then you've got charging up there as well. I mean, yeah, it's awesome. They like really, it's, they it's didn't IG think ready. Of, they think they thought of a lot of things with this. You have your accessories <laughs> yeah. up here that you can program, which is really cool. Who doesn't like some fighter pilot? I know. Toggles. I, I always feel like Maverick and Top Gun when I have this stuff. I might just turn these on just because. Just for fun. Yeah. yeah. We're going into maximum overdrive. Uh, <laughs> You got your your goat mode selector right here along with your two high four low yeah so this is something that i wanted to ask you because as a as a wrangler owner you're and we just got a 392 yep. so you're used to having like a separate shifter for your transfer case yeah which takes up a little bit more space up here obviously they've gone to like a dial situation here and buttons for your um four high four low and four auto 
Do you like this better because it opens up this space right here for a wireless charging pad? I mean, I like that they open that up, but I, there is something about actually moving a gear lever I that I like. Yeah. But I do agree, this just makes more sense from like a practicality standpoint. Yeah, there's just more storage. I think that's really the thing. It feels like there's more storage. I like that it came with sound bending material on the roof, mm -hmm. um, but as you just said outside, it's still quite loud. Yes. In here. I actually would yes. argue that it's louder in here than it might be. a Wrangler. You, you really feel it on that A pillar, especially yeah. on the driver. For, for whatever reason, it's less so on the passenger side, but on that driver's side, it is loud. And it's pretty roomy in here for a two door. Yeah, I mean, well, so. <laughs> In the, the rear, front. the rear, the front is very comfortable. Yeah, in the back. The rear not seats so are not usable. Yeah. Like, I had boots on filming B roll the other day could not fit my feet under these front seats. Mm -hmm. So sure, you can slam the front seats up, but then you're compromising the front seats. Yeah. And then with these rear seats down, it's not actually a flat surface with the it is, trunk. It is far from a flat surface. There's a huge hump. The seats don't lay flat. And with those rear seats up, it's just, it seems like the trunk is smaller with the rear seats up than you would get in a Tudor Wrangler. Yep. But overall, I think the interior is, is really well done. I mean, I think the thing that I like is they've, they've gone really deep in the Bronco logo and the Bronco brand, but you still have some Ford stuff. So you've got this Ford placard right here with you know the nuts to look like the Bronco's front fascia. You've got this engine start stop button, which looks like the headlight, but then you've got this blue accenting here on your grab handle. And the only place it says Ford is on the back tailgate. So mm -hmm. it is really cool. Yeah, I think they did a fantastic job exterior and on the interior as well. Yeah, so we've covered how it does on the road, we've covered the exterior, the interior. Let's Get set it on the trail. trails. Let's do it. So I've actually owned a Wrangler for two years. I actually just recently traded it in. Um, and we just got out of the 392, so I feel like it'll be fairly easy for me to kind of compare and contrast to and also mention kind of what you're looking for um, <laughs> when you want to get something like that so the first thing i want to talk about real quick is basically what package you should get this is the wild track package which comes standard with the sasquatch package now a lot of people are like i feel like there's a lot of options you can get with this thing and um there's also the badlands package so I basically just want to go through at a high level what the differences are and which one you should get. So high level, the a quick comparison for the two. The, uh, the Badlands is basically more tailored to your rock crawlers, you know, the individuals that want to go to Moab. And the Wild Track, as is, is more tailored towards individuals that want to do more high speed Baja, high speed off-roading. I'll just basically cut to the chase because there's a lot of information you can go see online and maybe I'll just, we'll just link it in the description. But if you spec a Badlands package and add on the Sasquatch and the 2.7, because that's not standard, um, it basically costs about $800 more than the Wild Track. And it's just under $50,000, so it's just under $50,000, it's $800 more if you get the Badlands Sasquatch, but with that, you get front and rear steel bumpers, you get um, under armor protection for, for rocks, obviously, you get rock rail, rock guards on the side as well, and you also get the, um, the uh, disconnecting front sway bar and then you also get the rock crawling mode as well so you get all of that for eight hundred dollars more i really don't know why you would buy the wild track i guess is the bottom line of, of what i'm trying to say so rant over if you got a wild track in the comments please let me know why because i don't know why you did that to be to be frank So we're kind of doing some agility tests here within the forest. Very narrow, so I'm thankful that we are, uh, it's very narrow and tight corners, so I'm glad that we're in the two door. Um, obviously right now I am trying to get as much traction as possible, so I'm in control of, of, the, of the vehicle as I can. So I am in four low, I have my locking diffs on, 
But you know, this thing has a pretty impressive turning radius as I'm just going through this. Um, but now I don't know where to go. It is pretty tight in here. I think I'm gonna have to try the turn assist again. So I'm actually gonna try that here. So basically just a button right up here on the dash. So you hit that. Trail turn assist is on. Okay, um, so we are basically right here up to a left turn that's pretty tight and I just wanna do it in one pass. So I turn on the turn assist feature. So let's see how it does. I have my left mirror kind of angled so I can see the rear left tire. But basically what it should do is lock up this inner back tire to um, increase my turning radius, or I guess decrease my turning radius. Oh, so yeah, it definitely did it. <laughs> that definitely uh, worked that time. Okay, so approaching a little bit of a mound, so I thought it would be a good time to tell you guys um, some of this information. So the approach, the approach angle, 43.2 degrees, which is just insane. Breakover is 29 and departure is 37.2. Ground clearance, 16, or sorry, 11.6. Yeah, so that was about a 15 degree steep mound. Was slipping a little bit. I have my diff locks on, obviously helped me get up. And it was about a 10 degree slope. So pretty easy. It is slippery out here today, I'll definitely say that. Yeah, so we are at 16 degrees. Promising, uh, slipping a little. Oh, it's steep. So right now, trying to get us. Kind of takes a minute for this articulation angle sensor to get me up to speed, but I am pretty, pretty steep here. We're at about 20. <laughs> my walkie-talkie fell. I don't want it to get underneath my brake. Don't know where that went. So. 23 degrees. Uh, right now, we're basically just gonna go over some smaller mounds, almost like moguls, uh, to just kind of see how the articulation is. It's obviously not gonna be as good as the Badlands, which has the disconnecting uh, sway bar but still will be an interesting test so getting up to it now and I can basically make this as intense as I want Oh, little, little slippery, but there we go. Oh, got, got up on that one fairly decently. So I think this is telling me my different angles the wheels are on. I gotta figure out. Yeah, handled that pretty well. Um, I obviously think with the, dis the disconnecting sway bar would have been a little bit better. It's also really slippery, so I couldn't basically try and max out the articulation, unfortunately. But uh, we're gonna do a few more obstacles here, so let's see how that goes.
There we go, power, yeah! And of course, the off-road capability is really what's going to grab people. And again, this goes further than simply taking everything the Wrangler does and making it a little bit better. It's just a completely more modern vehicle. Sure, you can lock your diffs in a Jeep and turn on crawl control, but in the Bronco you have dedicated modes to do all those things for you. And if you're not a seasoned off-roader, it's much less intimidating to be able to turn a dial and have the truck help you out. And for that reason, I think the Bronco will help usher in a new generation of off-road enthusiasts. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much to Ford and Road America for making this video possible. We'll see you next time.